Good Sunday afternoon, everybody. It's time to get this kitchen and get Sunday dinner going. I decided I had a wild hair that I want to make a pot of gumbo. So, y'all, watch and learn. If you hadn't uh, watched me make gumbo before, and before I get started, I'll just go ahead and say I could not find fresh oysters again. So, I'm going to make do. I'm going to make this gumbo anyway. I got some nice fresh shrimp, though. Got some fish, got some chicken, sausage, and I've got some, guess what, canned oysters. They'll do just fine. So, what I want to do first is I'm just getting from the commissary. One of the reasons why I don't go out there too often because I got out there and got start shopping. And I wasn't intending to, y'all, but I did. And uh, so, because I had to pick up a few things for this gumbo. So, what I'm going to do next is get, I've got about uh, 10 chicken wings. I'm just going to cut them in half, put them in a pot, cook them up for about 20, 30 minutes, get that broth going, get them seasoned up, and then I'll start dropping all my other ingredients. So, Y'all know how to cut up a chicken wing, so I'm just going to show you. See, my, I've got some tilapia off to the side there. Got me a bowl of shrimp there, and I've got uh, sausage, two different kinds of sausage. So we're going to make a big old pot of gumbo for Sunday dinner. Um, again, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and cut these chicken wings. They are real easy to cut, really very easy to cut. This is not uh, rocket science to cut chicken wings. So. We're going to get them in the sink here. I'm going to get them down in the sink because they're still a little bit frozen. But like I said, I just come out of the commissary. And uh, they were frozen. Hmm. Usually they're not frozen, so i got to get them thawed out a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and chop them up. Uh, just want to hang out with y'all just a few minutes. Hope you went to church today. Uh, I did. Had a great service today. Uh, we have something at our church called Growth Track. And it's a um, program at the church where you can go and learn about the church and learn various things. Now, we've been at the church several years, and this is something they started within the last maybe two or three years. But uh, I just got around to going and taking advantage of it. So share that today. And as, as, um, as I talk to you, I'll share with you a few of the things that I learned uh, from that particular class this morning. It was really, really some good teaching, some good information. It's a good thing to know about yourself and when you're serving the Lord and working in ministry. Um, I'm not trying to work in ministry per se, but I'm just trying to serve wherever the Lord leads me to serve or if I need to do something and so that it carries over into um, my everyday life. Because, you know, after all, we don't, I don't go to church on Sunday. And I need to start going to Bible study, but for the time being, that's what I do. And I like to carry what I learn in the church to my community and to my family. Okay, so hold on just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and cut these chicken wings up, and I'll be right back. Okay, y'all, tuning back in with y'all. I went ahead and cut most of these up. Now, these chicken... Uh, uh, wings are pretty, see how meaty, nice and meaty those are? I just use my uh, meat scissors to cut them in half and I cut the little wing tips off. And then what I'm also doing is, is I'm just going to cut just like that. And that way I'll get more pieces of chicken off into that. Because this this is just, you know, this, we're not just cooking chicken wings. We're cooking these wings so that they will enhance the flavor of this gumbo. And so that you, you know, when you eat and you want to get a little mouthful of uh chicken in there so i decided chicken wings because i for one like those bones in there so i'm just cutting them up so i'm gonna leave these bones in and um it's, it's gonna be a real good deal so it's that was um uh, i think i had eight chicken wings eight eight or ten chicken wings so that's a plenty for this pot of gumbo because the, the uh, chicken wings are an enhancement to the meal so what i'm going to do is go ahead and get these out of the sink get them over here into my pot uh, I've got uh, <coughs> excuse me, eight cups of water already boiling over here in my gumbo pot. I'm just adding a little bit more water, so I probably boiled about a cup or two away. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just start boil, just boil you up about eight cups of water, eight, ten cups of water, because, you know, and then you add more water as you need it. So what I'm doing now, like I said, is just to get this chicken going, because this is the longest single thing that's going to take uh, to cook. So we'll get that done. Uh, you know, of course, you got to wash it. You make sure you wash your wings real good. Uh, you know, every once in a while, they may have a few feathers. So go through there, pull the feathers off, pluck the feathers, y'all, pluck the feathers. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get these wings uh, into my pan over here. Uh, let me rinse this pan off. 
this is my super big pot here so i'm just gonna go ahead and drop those wings in there and get them boiling and then i'm gonna start um with all my seasoning in there okay let's, let's get right in that pot there okay there it goes so now you see that's the beginning of this gumbo so i'm gonna go ahead and get my seasoning going in there and i'll be right back Okay, we're back, and this is the seasoning. I got two tablespoons of garlic powder, onion powder, some adobo seasoning, and some blackened, um, Old Bay blackened seasoning to go in there. And I've got that boiling bag that I'm going to drop in there towards the end uh, of the cooking. So, and, I've, oh yeah, I've got four um, chicken bouillon cubes. So, that is... Two tablespoons of garlic powder, two tablespoons of onion powder, uh, a tablespoon of uh, two tablespoons of adobo, and one tablespoon of that Old Bay blackened seasoning, and um, and I'm going to be dropping a little bit of a tablespoon of salt is going to go in there too. I'm going to use, of course, you know I tell you I've been using that uh, Himalayan pink salt, so I'm going to be using that, and just going to let that chicken go ahead and start cooking, and I'm going to let it boil for about 45 minutes while I work on my veggies and my other things that the other ingredients that go into the gumbo. So I'll be right back again. Okay, y'all, we're resuming the gumbo making in this pan. I've got one pound of. Uh, smoked turkey sausage and I had one piece of um maybe have I cooked some uh what do you call it the Italian sausage I had one link of that sitting in the fridge so I just chopped it up put it right on in the pot so I'll just give it a little bit of uh, more flavor so anyway what I'm doing here because this is turkey sausage I had to put some a little bit of oil in the pan and I'm just sauteing them to pull that flavor out of them before I add them to the pot um I've also uh in my little ninja chopper, I've chopped up uh, about three cups of uh, onions, one half of a large bell pepper, I'm sorry, green pepper, and a large stock of celery. Now, remember what I told you about bell pepper and celery? They are very strong and pungent, the, the flavor. And for certain dishes, you need them, but you don't need a lot because celery, you know, will take over. And so will uh, green pepper if you put too much. So what I did, went ahead and just put... Um, Okay, a half of a, uh, well, maybe not a large, maybe a medium, a half of a medium green pepper and one stalk of a celery. And if it's a small, you know, bunch of celery being used to, just so you, you know, it's a discretionary type thing. But for me, this is, um, to the taste that I like and I know my family enjoys these particular flavors. So I'm just going to go ahead and it's going to take about 10 minutes to saute these, um, Sausages. You can see I cut them in little circles, you know, not even quite a sixteenth of an inch in depth. And I'm, you see, I'm clearing this other side of the pan because y'all know I got something else to go on the other side. You know, got to get this pot going. This plate is trying to be here shortly. Okay, I've also got a pound of Jimmy Dean hot premium pork sausage. So this is the only pork that's going into this pan, into this pot of. Uh, gumbo. The rest of it is either turkey or chicken. Okay, so that's uh, one pound to the sausage. Just give it a little bit of a kick. I hope it doesn't get too much of a kick. I don't think it will. So what I'm doing with that same thing, I'm going to saute them, you know, sort of be crumbly pieces. Um, I did not, in this area, for whatever reason, I've not found a good andouille sausage. So I just went ahead and thought, well, you know, I know that particular um, turkey sausage is real tasty, and um, it'll work, it works well uh, with what I'm doing. So we're going to go ahead and just get the sausage going. And there's no cross contamination. The heat's hitting this, this is on there on this side, and the other one's on the other side. So we got this going. So all this is raw meat chicken. So, uh, and it's... I got this heat on high now. You can't have the heat on low, otherwise you get too much, too much water going on in there. So just sort of uh, chunk it, chunk it, chunk it to, to fry it up. So it's gonna, like I said, it's going to take a good 10 to 12 minutes uh, to get all everything all done and cooked up. So I will uh, go off now. The next thing i got to do after this 
is I've got some fish and I've got the um, shrimp over there in a bowl. I've already uh, cleaned the shrimp, cleaned the vein, and I know the jumbo shrimp, so I sort of chopped some of those shrimp into pieces, and for the most part, I left the rest of it. So I'll say that's about a good pound and a half of shrimp, my shrimp. Uh, honey, if y'all live in your Sam Club, they have a big three-pound bag of jumbo shrimp for like $19.99. I have another bag for $17. I, I didn't stop to read to see what was going on why that one was $17. But anyway, that's a good deal for me because shrimp is expensive. And these were nice, large shrimp. Okay, so that sausage is frying along nicely. So I'm going to be right back in a few seconds. Okay, y'all, we're back. The sausage is browned. The other sausage is uh, sauteed up pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting it into, uh, over here in the pan with the chicken. That chicken, and, just, and try to get it to a, a rolling boil, if you will. Uh, and of course, this is going to be the same skillet I'm going to use for, um, I'm going to drain as much of this oil off as I can because I'm going to use this oil for doing my roux, okay? That's the fun. You know, the funnest part, that I, the part I like best about making gumbo is the roof. Because I, I learned this now from Justin, man, in New Orleans, years ago, watching him on TV um, make that roof. And he would dare you to get it real black. Because he got him to do it real black. And so I learned how to do it. It's, 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 a, it's, it's all in your mind. I think I've shared this with y'all before when I made the roof. It's all in your mind about that roux now. I tell y'all, you have to have a, a real strong heart to make black roux. That's just all there is to it. I learned that the honey, the darker that roux got, all I could think about, it's going to be burned, it's going to taste. Uh -uh. You know what you're doing, sure? I'm going to show you here shortly when I get all this out of here. So, and one thing, the other thing about the roux now, you have to pay attention to the roux. You cannot. You absolutely just cannot um, be doing other things while you're doing the this. Just all there is to it. Okay, so now we got the uh, sausage, the chicken, both kinds of sausage and chicken. Now, see that right there could be a pot right by itself if I threw some okra off in there. Okay, but since we ain't, we ain't got to that point yet, so we're just going to let that cook. I'm going to put it on low. I'm going to go ahead and put it on low for right now. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do, because I, put, I always put my, um, and, oh, let me, don't, don't let me get ahead of myself. Let me, let me get my bell pepper onion syrup. Now, I'm not going to saute it because I put it in the Ninja and it's minced really, really fine. So I can go ahead and get that going in there too. So let that get to cooking up in there real good. Just dump it right in. You see how it just blends right in there? Now, if I had hand chopped it and it was in bigger pieces, I would have sauteed it. But being like this, it's almost, it's not almost, it is, it's minced. It's really minced in there. I'm going to have to put some more water, of course, in there, as you can see. But that pot is about halfway full now. So, probably going to have to put about four or five more cups of water in there. I'm getting excited, y'all, because she's getting downtown. We need to get the screw going. And I tell you, I get excited about the room now. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you. And what I'm going to do, even though I'm going to use that oil out of the pan, I start my roux off in a clean pan. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that oil out of that pan. And I'm going to go ahead and wash my pan. Uh, because it has a little, uh, <coughs> little crusties on the bottom. I don't want nothing interfering with the color of my roof. I don't want to start out with nothing dark. So, whatever I end with dark is my natural roof. So, I'm going to go ahead and clean that skillet up, and I'll be back in a sec, y'all. Hold on now. Just get you a glass of lemonade or something and wait on me. Okay, y'all. I've got some, I got six ears of corn to put, to put in here. So what I did was I cut them pieces about like that. Almost like spoon sized pieces. That just gives that extra added flavor. You can put more if you want to, but because my pot is filling up, 
I'm only putting six. It's like six half ears of corn, and I just cut them up to give it that extra flavor in there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and um, start making my roux because we're getting close to the time I need to go ahead and I got my, you know, I told you I had my, that that's the flavor packet there. That crayfish, shrimp, and crab ball. I always drop one of those in on the end. And the reason I drop mine in at the end, I don't want, I've, I've got all these other seasons going. That will take over. I don't like that strong, strong, strong taste in there. So you have to be careful with certain seasoning. So, I'm going to go ahead and fire the skillet up. Get that roux ready to go. And while I'm doing that, I'm just going to go ahead and put the rest of my, um, everything else in. So the reason I'm doing this is because when you put the roux in, you need that water boiling. And you got to be real careful. And don't fill it up too, too far to the top because then it's going to pop up at you. Okay. I found me a can of clams, minced clams. So I'm just going to throw those in there. Anything that I find up there in that cabinet is going some one or two cans. And remember I told you I could not find fresh oysters, so I'm using smoked. These are canned. So for those of you who um, thought it wasn't good the last time I make it, think again. It was wonderful. Even though I do, I prefer fresh oysters for whatever reason. I found uh, all kinds of other seafood with the fresh oysters just weren't there. I got three cans in so far. Um, I'm going to check it out and make sure. Again, certain things, you have to know food and what they taste like and what they do in a dish. Now, I held back on that last can because I actually got four cans to put in there. But I held back a little bit. Look at all those ingredients in there. You see that? There's going to be plenty now. I'm going to tell you, I don't know uh, who's watching, uh, what you all do in restaurants or whatever, but when I want a bowl of gumbo, I want me a bowl of gumbo, and I like lots of ingredients in there, and my gumbo has everything in there in great quantities. It's not little skimpy little, wonder what that is, amounts, because I don't have paid as much as $10 for a bowl of gumbo, y'all. We got a shrimp and a few samplings of whatever. You know, what is it? I don't know what it was. But anyway, what I'm saying to you this is this. If I put this on the market, <clears throat> I think I'd do well with it. But since I'm not, this it's on the market for my family. How about that? Okay, hang on. I went ahead and did a taste test with those three cans of oysters. And I think I'm going to hold what I got on those oysters. I don't want... Because they're smoked oysters and they're, they're good. But you know, again, I don't want uh, that smoke taste to take over because that's not what gumbo really is supposed to taste. It's not supposed to be real, real, real smoky. It needs to be a little bit smoky, but not too smoky. So I held back on that fourth can. So we're just putting three cans of it. If you have to use smoke, hopefully you can get, um, and that, that those three cans are the equivalent of, let's see, 3.5. 9, 10, about 12 ounces, which is basically, um, and oysters, I think when you buy in those cans, you pay about $20 for that can of oysters, I think it's basically about um, 12, 14 ounces, so I'm sort of on target with that, not too far off with that. Okay, y'all, so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and get this roux going, because the next thing I got, the last thing I got to put in there is going to be my fish and my shrimp, so that grease has got to be. Okay, y'all, watch and learn. I'm going to have to use a metal, metal, so you're going to hear the noise. So you got to, if you want to hear what I'm saying, you're just going to have to listen real, real close. I mean, if, if you know, really it's just like uh, basically watching what I'm doing. Okay, that grease there, that was a little uh, oil that I had fried some chicken in, so it don't make no difference about that. Give it more flavor. Okay, so now you got to have the heat turned up on this stuff. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, you can't have no little bit of heat going on. got to have that heat rolling. And so I already see I'm going to need some more oil, so I'm going to just pour. I didn't pour enough oil because that was one cup of flour. And so far, this is like a cup of oil, so it's equal amounts of oil, okay? So what you got to do, you're going to let this roux sit there. And cook, but you gotta go ahead and stir in it now. You gotta stir in it. 
So you figure now, this is going to be the thickener for this pot of gumbo. So I got one cup of flour in there. You're going to keep stir. You have to stir, stir, stir because the thing about it is you want it to get black and in order for it not to burn and to get black. You see some people get scared right along in there. That's beige. That's barely beige. But you see the consistency. It's got to be about like that because it's got to cook and cook and cook and cook until it gets really, really black. I probably could have thrown a little bit more and I think I am going to throw a little bit more flour in there because what happens at the end um, usually I do a cup and a half so I'm going to go ahead and I might have to add some more oil to it but here's the deal what happens at the end when that roux starts to get real black like I like now see how it's getting dark I mean, you got to stir it stir, stir, stir. So that's good, that's good I don't think I might have to not even have to put any more oil in there but as long as this has a consistency where it does about like that you're in good shape um, I was going to put some olive oil in there but I think not See, I think I got enough oil left in here. Yeah, there we go. A little bit more oil. Because I like to keep my consistency sort of loose about like this. So, yeah, there you go. I feel real good now. When I, The first time I made this, let me just share the story for those of you who didn't hear my story before. The first time I made the roux for this, it was darker than this. But let me say this to you. My heart was beating so fast, I was about to have a fit. And I had told my husband, uh, baby, now I can use so it makes so much noise. Now I can switch over to my quiet spatula. Let's use the one that I use. Okay, you can hear me a little bit better, I'm sure. So now, now look. See how it's getting dark? Some people chicken out right there. Some people would chicken out right there. But you got to keep doing this. Just keep stirring it. Keep stirring it. And honey, it's got, look. It has to get a lot darker than what it is right now. And meanwhile, I got my gumbo over here boiling. Now, you want that gumbo cooking because when you put it in there, you don't want this to lump, knot, and all that kind of stuff. You want it to blend and to thicken because that's the whole purpose is to give this gumbo a deep, rich, uh, authentic color. Okay. See there how it's getting... Light, 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 caramel like color. It's a nice caramel color. But the main thing, like I said, you cannot leave this. You can't walk away and try to answer the door, talk on the phone, say hey to the neighbor. You can't do any of that with this room. You got to keep stirring it. And you got to keep it from because it's gonna burn. It's, it's, it's trying to burn. It's actually trying to burn on the bottom. So you got to keep it going. Then you got to know, like now. I had to add a little bit more oil because I needed a little bit more liquid, liquidy. Okay. Now, when Justin made his, as far as I can remember, honey, he knew how much the oil to put in there from the get-go. I don't even remember whether he added more oil or not, but I do know this. <clears throat> he would dare you. He said, let that root get on that brown there. Let that root get on black there. And this is what I'm doing. So you got to talk to this roux. That's why I'm continually holding this conversation. Because I'm saying to this roux, look, I need you as dark as I can get you. And I don't need you burn. Because that's a lot of roux. And that's a lot of gumbo over there. And I don't want to have to start over. So this is why you have to, seriously, this is why you have to continue to uh, stir, stir, stir. Watch what you're doing. Make sure that you don't let it burn on you. Because it will try Honey, it will try. Now I'm going to have to get on back in here with this metal spatula. Because see, I got to get it off the bottom of the pan. It's trying its best. Now, you see how dark that is? Y'all see the depth, the depth of that color? Okay. How many of y'all scared? Raise your hand. Anybody, anybody scared? Raise the hand. Anybody scared? Anybody scared? Raise your hand. Okay, scaredy cats, raise your hand. Raise your hand. It's smelling like it might try to burn. Y'all better raise your hand if you're scared. Now, I'm telling you, get them hands up there if you're scared. See that? Got to keep stirring it. And you got to smell it now. See, it ain't burn, but you got to smell it, y'all. You got to smell it. Y'all have to excuse me, honey, because I get real excited about this roof. Let me show y'all something other. And you know what? A few more turns here. And I'm about ready to put this roux. About ready. 
about ready. Anybody want to tag team me on this one? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I do. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Can y'all see that? Can y'all see it though? That's what I want to know. Can you really see how dark that roux is? That is that roux is dark, y'all. Okay. Okay, y'all. Oh, y'all, okay, y'all oh, scared. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there. I'm gonna go ahead and start. And remember, y'all be careful. It'll bubble up on you. Okay. All right. All right now. All right, and we don't want to get it thick, 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 thick. Um, have to get it over there by the window. So, anywho, I may have to put a little bit more in there. We'll see. May put a little, little bit more in there. But as you can see, now for anybody that knows anything about gumbo, you know that gumbo is supposed to be about that color. Um, about that color. I think I need a little bit more. A little bit more. You see how it bubbles on you? But you have to be very careful because um, it's almost like it wants to jump up out of the pot. But again, the purpose of the roux is for color and to get um, kind of a brothy you know, kind of thicken it a little bit so it's not real watery. You don't want it watery. You want it kind of, and that about, about a cup, cup and a half of flour is what you need to pretty much thicken. I'm just going to use most of that. I'm just going to go and put the rest of it in there. So. Okay. Was that fun or what? For all the chefs out there that, that know how to make gumbo, this is this is in my kitchen. For all those professional chefs out there who make this in their kitchen, I, I don't know if you go through all these steps like I do. Um, um, Rue, uh, I'm sorry, Rue. Rue is a specialty thing. Uh, gumbo is a specialty dish, and it's one of those dishes that I'm just going to take my paper towel and go around here like that to get those little squigglies off there that popped up. But seriously, and see, I've got enough room left in that pot to get my shrimp and my fish in there and my okra. I've got to put my okra in there. So I'm going to go ahead now that i got that done. For whatever reason, I don't know why. Nobody told me I had to, but I always put my shrimp, because you don't want that shrimp to cook too, too long. Even though this freezes, you can take it back out uh, months from now and eat off of it. And it tastes just fine. Um, what I want to do now is go ahead and I'm going to open my okra. I'm going to put a couple of cups of okra in there, fresh okra. I found some, y'all won't believe this big old bag of okra. This is the only size bag they had in the commissary. Y'all make it not it's a big old bag. I think that's five pounds of okra. But anyway, <coughs> I'll be doing a lot of okra stuff next week. I don't want to turn it up too high. But uh, this is going to cook for another hour or so. So all those flavors will have the opportunity to cook in. And so that um, you want your okra to cook all the way through too. Um, some people say they don't like okra. But they love gumbo. So they don't even know the difference because surely I put okra in my gumbo. I think I'm going to put a couple of cups of this. Okra just gives me that extra added flavor, texture, and consistency. So that's one. Turn that up there. Um, you know, like I say, cooking to me, I love to cook. I love, I love to cook. I love uh, experimenting and things that I like when I go somewhere and um, eat food. And sometimes, you know, and I don't know what nobody do because I'm sure I probably have cooked things that people think, oh, man, she got enough seasoning too much, you know, don't like what I cook. But that's fine, but I like highly seasoned food. So, um, in fact, I went somewhere yesterday and ate some food that it was okay, but it wasn't all that great. I mean, that's just me. Because, again, I like highly seasoned food, and I like properly highly seasoned food. Um, 
I may throw a few more pieces of okra in there. Maybe make it two and a half cups. What y'all think? Because one thing about the okra, it's going to cook to pieces. Um, eventually, you won't even know it's in there. I'm going to let that okra cook for the, for the most part. And then I'm going to put the shrimp in. This, the shrimp is going to be the very last thing I put in there. I've got my, I'm, I'm going to let it cook a little bit. Then I'm going to add the uh, fish and then I'll add the shrimp last. For all practical purposes, the work in this pot has been accomplished. Again, to me, the work was that roux because it takes some kind of doing to get that roux going. Oh, did I rhyme? Okay. Anywho, and uh, we're going to do another taste test once the okra cooks in real good. Everything else is pretty much cooked in. But that's a nice, um, it's just one of those. Now, Tanya likes her gumbo with uh, the tomatoes. So, I'm going to take some of this out and put it in another pot when I get it all mixed. And I'll just add some tomatoes to her. She just likes her with tomatoes. So, I will accommodate her taste. But, uh, Chef, what y'all think? Is that the darkest gumbo you've seen in a while? And I didn't do nothing else to it to make it dark except that roux has got my gumbo the color I want. And that's the color I always want my gumbo. So hold on just a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, y'all, here we are. Everything is boiling and doing really well for the gumbo. Remember I told you Tanya likes tomatoes in hers. So what I've done is just took her about two quarts out of my pot. There's my pot. This is going to be her pot. This is hers by herself. And I'm just going to pour that can of um, diced tomatoes. 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes in there. Ooh, perfect. I um, thought I was going to run it over. but um, <clears throat> So I'm just going to let hers get hers all mixed up here. And this is Miss Tonya's. This is Lady T. She likes tomatoes in hers. I don't like tomatoes in mine. That's the way she likes hers. Is every time I make it, I always make her her own little pot of gumbo. Um, so that's going to let that cook. Thicken it. And as it cooks, it'll thicken. And she'll have her own little private uh, two-quart pot of gumbo. And that's all you have to do. If you got somebody that likes tomatoes in it, make your regular pot. And then just go ahead and put add tomatoes. You know, separate pot, put tomatoes in there. And you get the same result. So, we're going to just let this everything just continue to cook a little bit longer. Then, I'm, I still have not put the fish and shrimp in. Still got to add the shrimp in. Um, let's see what, what I'm trying to see is where my, uh, I really want my, I like for my uh, <clears throat> okra to go ahead and sort of cook the pieces in there for the most part. Okay. And it's doing real, and then I have taste tested. It tastes wonderful. Only thing missing now is I'm gonna go ahead and put my uh, fish and my. Um, remember, I tell you I had a uh, couple pieces of tilapia, so there's some tilapia for that pot. Just drop that tilapia right in there. It needs to boil. And. About a fourth of a cup. Ooh, can't put too much in there. Put some shrimp in there. And the rest of it will go into the big pot. So, we're going to have us some good eating right here in a little while. I might have to take a little bit of that juice out of that pot. <clears throat> when it starts boiling, I don't want it to cook over on the stove. Okay, so let's, let's just do that right now with this measuring cup. Just take, I don't want to get any of that. Just the juice. About that much you reckon. Yeah. Okay. That won't hurt my pot. Those tomatoes haven't had a chance to cook in. But you see she's got lots of shrimp and fish already in hers at least. Okay, so we're going to let that start cooking. Get it all boiled up. Get, um, <clears throat> I think the okra is doing well. Like I like that okra to just cook, 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 cook in there. And um, I can slow cook hers, but I'm going to keep fast cooking mine because I want that okra cooked up in there. And, uh, <clears throat> okay. I can tell you, there's certain foods that I cook. Y'all know what? I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, fish going into the big pot. 
Okay, there goes the fish. Let's just see. We don't have to spoon it. We can just do it like that. There's a fish and a shrimp into the big pot. Okay. Okay. Get that roll into a boil. And we're going to have us some nice, nice gumbo. We probably want to eat about 5 o'clock because I need for this to cook at least another hour. Okay? So, there it is, y'all. There is my version of gumbo. Called Peggy Gumbo. I said New Orleans Gumbo one time. and Somebody told me it wasn't because I didn't put fresh oysters in there. So have it your way because it's, it's my recipe anyway. So I'm just going to let that boil. And when it boils, I'll determine if I need to thicken. Because you know, I don't like a watery, soupy gumbo. I like mine um, just where to stick to that rice. Because I got, to, of course, I, you know, doing rice. Pour it over, put it over some rice. We're going to have some French bread. And we're going to do some cornbread. Okay. So let's go away for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and get those corn muffins going. I'm going to let this continue to cook. And uh, I'll be back, and then we're going to sign off with you, okay? Okay, y'all. Now, y'all know how I like butter. So, I've not added butter to my gumbo before. But guess what I'm going to do today? I'm going to put a half a stick. Of butter in there. Did I hear somebody say, won't you just go ahead and put the whole stick in there? There you go. You got it. So if I put a half a stick in there, that means I got a, a stick in there. It means I got to put a half a stick in Tonya's pot. So, okay. Half a stick in Tonya's pot. So, now we got something going on here. So, the secret weapon of the day for this gumbo. Um, so, y'all know this is my very own. My secret weapon for today is a stick of butter. Butter in the gumbo. Y'all know it's going to be good. It's gumbo piggy style. Okay. So. That gumbo is going to cook another hour or so. Before we actually eat it. You know gumbo is one of those uh, things. You can put it on the stove. You can cook it all day long. The more you cook it the better it gets. You know that. But because we got to eat it at some point. So I'm going to say for cooking time on this. It's been about two and a half hours. Which is good. It's done. Everything's blended. It's just one of those pots that the longer you simmer it, you know, the more flavor is pulled out of it. So we're just going to let it uh, continue to simmer slowly. Let that butter cook through there. See that, uh, see what I mean about the okra? The okra is about gone. You probably don't even, you don't see the okra. You know how uh, parents used to tell you you need to be seen and not heard? Well, we want this okra tasted and not really seen because those folks just don't like okra. I don't know why. Tastes good to me. But anyway, for all practical purposes, that butter, by the time we get ready to eat, the butter will be out of sight. I, I'm sorry, the okra will be pretty much out of sight. So y'all, listen, I'm going to go ahead. Okay, and I've got my pot of Okay. And for today, y'all, this gumbo is finished. I've still got that flavor packet in there. I'm going to leave it in there for a little bit. And then, at the end, I'm going to go ahead and take it out. But for right now, I'm going to leave it in there and let it continue to simmer and cook. Um, thank y'all for hanging out for, with me for these two hours to get this pot of gumbo uh, going and Tanya's pot over here is going with the tomatoes. It looked that butter welling up over there. So what I'm going to say to y'all is love you guys. Hope you had a happy Sunday afternoon and hope you went to church today and learned some word I did. I'll share that word with you one day next week because it was a very rich word and we had that special class. So I'm going to be sharing both of those with you all. So listen, guys, until we meet again, uh, until I cook again, I am going to say Thank y'all for tuning in. Go in that kitchen and cook something. I don't, if, even if you have to open up a can and season it up because food is food is food. Even though it's better when you cook it from scratch. But 
however you do it, just make yourself something good so you can feel good about it. Listen, until I cook again, I'm going to say love you guys. Keep those prayers going up so the blessings will continue to come down. So on this Sunday afternoon, I'm going to say love you. Toodaloo.